Hey everyone, it's 527 in the AM, November 23, 2017. And uh, if you hear in a, this a background noise here, I'm sorry about that. It's the furnace, uh, the new house that we moved in. Uh, I don't have the separation from a lot of different noises that I even did in the old house we were in. Uh, it's just something that I'm going to have to live with because, you know, as the weather gets colder, if I were to wait uh, for silence from the furnace or uh, whatever other noises, because I've got the furnace uh, not far from me, the way it was set up and positioned in this house, it was based on a certain kind of design, uh, efficient design. And then in another room, um, directly uh, I guess it would be in, in front of me and, and not that far away without a solid door between us then there's the, the refrigerator and that will hum too this it's a Yeti mic it's got a lot of sensitivity I try to set it to where it's mostly only going to pick up what is directly in front of it uh, my voice but uh, it, it, it may not it may it, it may pick up a number of other sounds around it's not a lot I can do about that other than only recording when the furnace isn't going or the fridge isn't going or something like that and that's just um, it's just not feasible so what I have uh, on the screen for anyone um, who's actually who's looking at this and I know I'm going to have to change some of my methods, and I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. And the reason for that is because I am going to be going over to a, a podcast uh, site. They, they're they currently offering free podcast slots because they're trying to, to build up their site um, and bring in advertisers. They've already got other podcasts on there I've spoken to the guy who um, I don't know if he's in charge or if he's just the guy who's trying to like uh, market and gather you know people who will do podcasts from there or not um, about advertisements because I didn't want a advertisements stuck on my you know m my it's not gonna be videos it's gonna be audio and podcasts that I didn't agree with and he said that that wouldn't be the case that the adverts would be uh, separate and all that but of course that brings up the problem you know if these what are you gonna I don't know what you're gonna do you know people that are trying to get information to others which is what I'm trying to do which is what a lot of other people try to do um, specifically the people that don't monetize, for instance, their, their YouTube channels and their videos. Um, and that, that doesn't mean that I'm blanketing everybody who does uh, as being in it for the money necessarily. Okay. All I'm saying is this. The people who care enough about the truth and sharing information with others because what they care the most about is that the truth comes out my belief and the belief i'm i'm operating on is that as the truth comes out and as our knowledge and understanding increases what we're going to find is that the word of yahweh is vindicated as being our source of history and truth uh knowing who we are more of the purpose of of what we're doing and uh our father yahweh's purposes and this this whole story and whole plan uh that we see recorded throughout the bible and i am talking about the so-called old testament and new testament uh i do believe that um as knowledge and understanding increases his word as the truth historically um, and in other various ways like for instance 
various forms of, of prophecy. Uh, when I say various forms, there's what seems to be um, straightforward literal prophecy and apocalyptic prophecy, all of it. All the literature that is his, that he inspired, will be vindicated. Um, any of the literature that has made it in there, that shouldn't be in there, will be exposed. Any literature that should have been in there and was excluded, uh, I believe, will be included. And the way that a lot of this is, is going to happen, um, it's first off going to happen by way of his will and his timing. Um, I oftentimes, when I'm working on these things, most specifically language and applying what I can learn about the source language to the text and trying to decode and scrape away all of the muck that the Masoretes have uh, layered all over the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, and I, I pray for understanding of these things. I do consider uh, all the time when I do that, in Acts chapter 1, um, before Yahshua ascends, and his apostles, uh, they ask him if it is now that the Father is going to restore the kingdom to Israel. And he responds to them, that's not for you to know these times, these matters, but it's for the Father only. And I try to keep that in mind all the time before I get immensely frustrated with the work that I am doing because I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I know that I, me, the person I am, the life I've lived, the abilities that I have, I am inadequate in that way. The only the only thing that is going to make me adequate for this or um, is going to cause me to uh, bear fruit in, in these endeavors is the Most High God, Yahweh. Um, and I also believe that it is because even the whole reason I even have the desire to do this and the passion and the drive is because, as the word says, he has sent me the spirit of his son in my heart. So these are my beliefs. I'm operating off of what I believe right now. I think if anybody tells you they're not operating off a certain specific belief system, that they're not being honest. And again, the point here is to spread information. So hopefully others who the Father has intended to use to advance the truth will take these things, whatever small, humble offerings I have, and by inspiration of the Most High, they'll bring them further. This was my point from the start. Now, obviously, from the start, when I began making videos over two years ago, I had already at that time a number of dogmas. But they were, they were dogmas based on what I thought was the best available knowledge. That's one of the things that makes me uncomfortable about people who think to teach uh, as an authority is oftentimes their knowledge base 
epistemology because I hear people all the time or read people all the time that are teaching from a knowledge base and they are asserting that they have an authority or that their sources have an authority when oftentimes they're not even aware of the solidity or non-solidity of their epistemology, their knowledge base, where it comes from. And this has been a process over time of finding out as I tried each new endeavor concerning knowledge that it hadn't gone deep enough because I would get hung up on something every time. So we have to go to the source. I don't suppose a lot of this I'm necessarily uh, gearing towards those who don't think the Bible is accurate or as being uh, the preserved word of Yahweh, the Most High God. I would have to say I'm more specifically speaking to those who have a belief or affirm that that's the case. Now, if somebody's listening and they don't believe that, um, then I would say not to dismiss it all without thoroughly testing it in every possible way because I've uh, spoken to so many people now over the years that dismiss the Word of God or Yahweh God himself and their knowledge base even of what scriptures we have is is very lacking and I hate to see judgment uh, on matters that someone is ignorant in because you're not doing yourself any favors. So if I go to this uh, podcast network, I think what I'm going to have to do, and yes, if they, if they do start advertising all kinds of stuff that I don't agree with or something, you know, or, or start exercising types of policies like YouTube has, then I'm going to have to find something else to keep going and doing this. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to eventually have to end up doing if YouTube continues on the path that they're on. They are charlatans. Uh, they are liars. Uh, they, they don't keep their word. They don't keep their contracts. And and you don't want to um, be subject to someone who does not keep their word, does not keep their contract, and moreover, uh, actively promotes channels that are are unarguably geared towards um, not only perverting the thoughts of children. Um, but channels that are specifically geared towards um, pedophiles and their, their sick desires. That's what YouTube's all about. So I have to get away from YouTube. I have to find a place where I can get to. If I, if I go with uh, just this podcast, um, I would probably also try to be uploading those audio files to YouTube at least for a while to try to at least let the people know there where I'm at um, but again there's a visual thing here and that's one of the best things about a video where you can do audio and and visual uh, because specifically in this video I'm going to have this visual stuff up so I don't know if I'm going to have to start working again on my word 
WordPress page and have that as, uh, you know, two sister areas, uh, the, you know, the, the WordPress, the blog, because I can do a lot there, really, uh, at WordPress. I can embed um, clips of audio w with visual images and then text. So it's that's it's and and even if you don't pay subscription for WordPress, and I tried that by subscription for a year, and they, they didn't really bring me any more people than I, I had had before. So I didn't really I didn't really see the point. And plus, uh, a lot of templates that they had that I liked were were actually more money besides. So I'm not sure if I really see the whole point of paying. But you can use WordPress even just for free, and your, uh, your amount of tools and options, things that you can do, they're, they're pretty, they're a lot. So that may be what I have to do. So I'll keep you posted. So on the screen, I've got a word. It's spelled T-R-A-D-I-S-H-O-N. And I'm telling you that that word is tradition. Now, I know you're saying that's not how tradition is spelled. Yeah, but who cares? What does it matter? Does it matter because if you look it up in Webster, you're not going to find it because it's not spelled right? Does its so-called misspelling matter in any other way or context or application? other than the fact that you will not be able to find it under that spelling in Webster. You say, I did not use the T-I to make the S-H sound. That's correct. I didn't. I used the S-H because it was the most obvious. And if I were to put, say, a suffix on the end of it, um, my suffix m might as well be A, L, Y. So why didn't I use the double L? Because why should I? Well, the answer would be so that the sometimes consonant, sometimes vowel Y at the end does not affect the vowel before the consonant and make it a long vowel instead of a short vowel. And my answer to that would be how does the state of a vowel, whether it's pronounced A or A, change the meaning of a word? If you can tell me how its long or shortness here changes the meaning, the meaning of the word, other than changes perhaps the placement it would have in Webster's dictionary, then I'll consider putting two consonants in here. Other than that, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. English and our language today, and I'm abs of course this is this is bled into all kinds of Semitic languages because uh, they're all Semitic languages. I can show that very easily. So English um, and its variables um, anything around Germanic, Scandinavian, um, French. These are all Semitic languages. You can see it all right in the character. And I'd have to say Spanish as well. 
a lot of those lower Mediterranean languages are going to come from Latin, which is said to be coming from Etruscan and Greek, all Semitic languages. These are all Semitic languages. So anyways, today, any of the languages that are still, in quotes, living, they are suffering from the same problem that English is suffering from. They are empty, thin, devoid of inherent meaning and inherent value. <sighs> See if I can describe best what exactly English is because of its, its usage. English is the water of languages, unstable in all of its ways, so, so easily malleable it will fit any desired container. English and all of its existing cousins today are fiats. They are the fiat currencies of communication. It's the same with your money. That $20 bill in your wallet is worth what it's worth because the Federal Reserve says that's what it's worth. It has no inherent value. That's English. Worse yet, if that were the worst part, that might not be the most terrible thing. If we had another language that was expressing to us the absolute truth of things, and we could know and understand that language, a language that is made up of icons or characters or pictographs that have in and of themselves inherent meaning. Now, of course, I'm operating off the belief that that is the source language of Hebrew. And what I mean when I started saying what's worse is the fact that what is being passed off as Hebrew today, it is not Hebrew. It is a stylized script that has no inherent meaning in itself either. English is an absolute playground for deceivers and scammers and con men and liars. It is, for all intents and purposes, the devil's favorite language. It is the language that allows for things like legalese. Uh, it is the perfect language for poetry, flowing, artsy, fartsy poetry, where words can be strung together and woven about that don't have to always have their concrete meaning because they're malleable, they're changeable. You can do whatever you want with them. And as we've seen in the development of language, even in a century, that's exactly what is done with language. English language. English allows for things like abonics. Why? Because it doesn't have any inherent meaning. So you can extract, you can add new meanings to new words. You can give birth to any monstrosity you want out of it, apply meaning to it, 
and thus set the understanding of it outside of itself. Always the understanding of it comes from outside itself. Just like fiat currency, the value of it is set from outside of itself. A dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill, both have the same inherent value. It's just that somebody who has power has told you that their value is different. Just like with English. It's not a mistake. It's not an accident that English has been made the lingua franca of the entire world. Because those in power who are deceivers and conmen and murderers, liars, devils, they can use English to accomplish whatever lying, deceitful thing they want. You see the problem. But if we can figure out a language, whether or not, whether or not you want to say that the Bible is history and factual, that Hebrew contained from the Torah to the prophets to the writings, that is easily one of our oldest languages we have. And what we've found out over the years, and I am going to be very clear about when I talk about the archaeology, we found these things out through mostly archaeological finds that have had enough... All right, I won't get into that. Hang on. That have enough of these characters in certain forms and showing developments thereof for us to have a far older character that was used before it went through some developmental changes. Now I meant to print so I had them right in front of me a number of charts that show developmental changes that we're able to record from what we believe are the earliest icons of Hebrew, usually called Proto-Sunniatic uh, Proto or Ancient Hebrew. Sometimes people call it Paleo-Hebrew. And I don't know that it's always changes in time per se, or actually just changes based on the textural traditions of whoever was scribing uh, at the time. A and I can illustrate what I'm saying in that by... Um, well, let's say this. A, a couple of hundred years ago, even, a scribe who was producing uh, a, any given text, or we can even just say um, when the printers started, uh, you know, printing their, uh, their texts, of, of various sorts, you know. And, yeah, I am pretty much scribbling on the screen here, okay. Let's say that at the time that they were doing all of this, that they made an H like that, a lower case H like that. Let's fast forward a couple of hundred years. And let's say that on most typewriters, 
they would use a lowercase h that looked more like that. And let's say today, uh, a standard font may be more in the sense of uh, instead of a Times New Roman, which was very standard and was very heavy in serifs, let's say today a more standard representation of H would be something that was more Arial or Gothic, like that. Now, this of course is the same letter as that it's just that over time and depending on uh, many various factors the people who were printing this H a few hundred years ago made it look more uh, complex or frilly than today looking like this and I would pose to you that that is quite possibly the reason why, let's say, we would see an ancient Hebrew character, the so-called Aleph, that would be represented more like this, and then we would see the so-called Aleph then represented like this. And some would say, well, you know, this first Aleph here, uh, that would be maybe circa 1500 BC, but this Aleph here would be more circa 700 BC. Well, I don't know that all of them have the proof for these things or claims like that. But the more I look at these various characters, I believe that it's very possible that just as I said, it could be various factors depending on location and time and culture and scribal tradition and all kinds of things. It doesn't necessarily mean the character had to develop in the sense of its core meaning changing. But, you know, for one thing, some characters um, are more time-consuming to write than others. So, somewhat shorthand versions of them might have been used by some scribes over others. So, based on these characters that we have, that, that um, have been uncovered in archaeological finds, and again, that is a whole issue in and of itself, we do have an alphabet to work from. This alphabet does consist of icons with inherent meaning. The problem with us having these ancient characters is that we also now have a slew of gatekeepers. They are <clears throat> either conscious deceivers, obscuring the true meanings of these characters that make up the ancient Hebrew alphabet, or they are, they're just getting their information from the gatekeepers. And I can say this authoritarily, be, um, authoritatively, because when I learned about the ancient character, uh, I went really searching for knowledge and understanding of these things. And of course, I ended up invariably at the gatekeepers sites their information that's what's out there and I'm here to tell you I'm not going to recommend that anyone goes to any of these sites that are teaching in any way about the ancient Hebrew character 
We've got to start this one from scratch. We must. We absolutely must. Because there's just, in my opinion, there's just no way that the keepers of this knowledge are going to be too happy about people understanding this. These people, in one way or another, have been keeping every truth that would enlighten us to our world, ourselves, our Creator, and our purpose, the way things work. They have been keeping us in a perpetual state of darkness. The people who do this are very secretive. And all you have to do is keep looking into these things and keep seeing uh, the same kinds of people behind um, keeping this knowledge a secret. Some of the most secretive people that there are are the Talmudic Jews and the Kabbalistic Jews. They are secretive. They don't even want their Talmud published and made available to whom they call the Goy, which, of course, is ironic. But that's, I guess, another issue in and of itself. Anytime you have a secret society, you have to conclude that there are secrets they are keeping, obviously. Those secrets that they are keeping is the knowledge and understanding that would enrich others. They believe themselves to be above others, worthy of keeping these truths, this understanding, while others are not. It works this way in the realms of science, geography, cosmology, and those are just sciences, money, absolutely, morality, and all these things, of course, are going to go back to knowledge, where we can get it from, and how we can know absolutely what is knowledge and to have understanding. If we have no knowledge and understanding, it is absolutely, like Yahweh says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If we don't understand that sin causes slavery, when we are a slave to sin, we can easily be conquered by and dominated by others. If we don't understand that, then we allow things like the mass proliferation of pornography on the internet so that anyone can see it and not only can anyone see it and experience this which is sin that even those who are not seeking it and trying to find edifying information will oftentimes invariably bump into pornographic images because they want all of those who have any kind of weakness for that. They want them to only be brute beasts without understanding, locked into, enslaved by sin. And if we have no understanding that that sinful behavior makes us slaves, and thus easily dominated, 
then we will simply continue to be brute beast slaves, easily dominated. We have to gain understanding. And in getting understanding, we will get wisdom. We can act right, live right, do right. And that is something they can't have. Because when we begin to do that, we will not be able to be dominated like they need us to be. So I'm going to be making a number of videos that simply show you what characters there are that make up this ancient Hebrew alphabet. Um, in the course of doing that, I may tell you what the, uh, the current gatekeepers say that these things mean, um, even though I'm not sure how dangerous it even is to get into that, because when you get certain thoughts in your head, it's like a globe in a classroom, correct? Sometimes it's hard to get those things back out of your head. A lot of these presentations I'm going to be doing, and this is why I talked about the podcast thing and the problems with that at the beginning, is because it's going to be visual. I'm going to show you the characters. Because here's the thing. With an icon, obviously, an icon has inherent meaning. You can't change its meaning. Once you know its meaning and it's established, you can't fudge around with that icon. Because it clearly represents something solid, concrete, unchangeable. The thing is, and, and here's the way it works with gatekeepers, they've got to give you enough to, to be perceived as credible. But that's it. Remember, they admit that a full 20% of words, various words, in the Hebrew scriptures are not fully understood. Can you imagine the effects that this has on our understanding of our origins, our history, our world, who we are, who our God is? His plan, all of his messages, the way we're to live, what we are allowed to do, and what we are commanded to do. 20% of words. That makes a difference. And I don't want to fill any of your heads with the gatekeeper's nonsense. I would very much like, as I go, if those of you out there who can see what I present as I go concerning this alphabet, would take the time to consider them, um, the, the, the characters because they are characters. They aren't meaningless letters. They really represent something. And maybe we can begin to understand what they represent and then how they work together and then gain more and more understanding of the words, then the thoughts and ideas, and then the text as a whole 
and then we can begin to understand what it is all of the changes the Masoretes made use other texts for checks and balances and let's get to the source of truth because anybody teaching authoritatively on the Bible these days specifically using names and words locations and specifics authoritatively are out of line and they probably don't even know they are but I'm here to tell you that that is the case language has to be inherently valuable or our value of language just like money is coming from an outside source it's fiat our language is fiat by decree not by inherent worth so until my next video I hope uh, all of you enjoy the time that that you get with your family um, uh, any of you who get time off work any of you who don't um, that stinks it does because I've worked endless holidays uh, throughout my life so I completely understand so either way I will see you all next time take care of yourselves and be good